Hello everybody, today we are going to make a glass bead necklace. Uh, materials we're going to be using are a one millimeter brown leather cord. I, the, bl the black leather cord doesn't seem to work as good for the glass beads, but for some other reason I have no idea why, but the brown one works good. Uh, we got a couple of jump rings, some crimps, one millimeter crimps, and a 12 millimeter lobster clasp. Those are the materials. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to be making a seven inch one. You're going to need a ruler of some sorts, or if you have one of these cutting boards, you can use one of these cutting boards. So we're just going to kind of line her up, and we're going to get to 7 inches. Um, when doing these with glass beads, I like to cut the, make the cut at an angle, so that the face of it is a little bit narrower at the beginning. It helps with the beads. And then we're going to take this flat end, and you can use a straight needle nose or, or one of these curved ones. I don't think it makes a difference, but we're going to kind of start that off. And then we're going to get this in place so we'll be able to close it tight once we get on it. And you're going to want to try to get this flush with the back side of it. Um, if you do go over, you can uh, crimp it. Or you can uh, use a flush tool to cut it. But you want to try to get it in there nice and secure and not have to deal with that. I got a little bit on there so I'll have to do that but not too shabby and then once you crimp off that end it'll secure everything in place and then you just gotta come around to this back side here and you gotta crimp this other end closed. So we got a nice tight seal there and you can see there's a little bit of overhang there so we're gonna actually take uh here we go um, these are just they come with model kits or you can pick them up at any jewelry store and you're going to be careful to not cut the metal. You just want to cut the nip the little bit of leather overhang that you have in there. Come on now. Well, let's try this again. I've actually snipped a couple of these off and I had to start over, so I'm trying to be a little bit more careful this time. It's actually like embedded in there a little bit. There we go, we got it. All right, good. I like to make sure they're nice and clean, so I gotta do that. So before we start this, uh, the hat, Ashley Exo, uh, streamer on Kick and Twitch, great person, great friend. Her husband's amazing too. Uh, their merchandise is available at Rift Damage. I'll put the link in the comments of the video too, so if you wanna get a nice, awesome hat like mine, you know where to get it. Alright, so now we're going to start off and we're just kind of like, you decide at the beginning how you're going to put the beads through. Um, I've done tons of these so I kind of just, let's move this in a little bit for you. There we go. Make sure my hands are in there good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's move this around a little bit. There, should be good with that, it covers most of it. So what I'm doing is I'm alternating dark and light. Um, you can do this however you want to. There is no right way or wrong way. Um, That's just the way that I've made every one of these that I've made so far. And for those that don't know, these are available on our Etsy shop, Growl Outer Creative. They're available in sizes from six all the way to nine and all the half sizes in between. And if there's a size that's not on there and you want a size that's not on there, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Alright, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to alternate these and we're going to go through. And we got to pretty much just fill this up as tight as we can with beads. Uh, some of these are going to be too small. Those ones you just kind of pitch back in there and let them go. Um, you'd be able to use them for other projects. And there are some that actually don't have the ends at all, like have one end drilled out at all. Um, those ones you can just kind of, I don't know, do what you want with them. I keep everything in a in a bin here. Everything that's like waste or um, broken or defective, things that are, that we got that weren't good. Everything goes in there and we're going to actually use them in some upcoming epoxy projects. Um, I don't know when that'll be, but my wife, she's in charge of the epoxy department, so. Alright, so now I got this first 
passed on. So now what I'm doing is I'm kind of going dark and light and I'm alternating in the insides again. You can set these up however you want to. I just kind of took it from how I got it from the craft store and we're rolling with it. When they're empty, they're empty. We move on to something else. Got plenty of crafts to try out, plenty of hobbies to try out. We got lots of stuff coming up too. There we go. Some of these will go on pretty tight, which is kind of nice because they'll allow you to, if you have to make any kind of a gapping because you can't fit one in, you can always gap a little bit and make it a little bit looser. There you go. So we did that. All right, now we're coming over this way. And generally with like anything over six inches, you're probably gonna have to go through this like twice. Go through each round like twice. Um, depends because some of these beads are a lot wider. Some of them are skinnier, some of them are wider. There's no real uniformity with glass beads. They kind of do what they want, it looks like. So you can see so far we got some nice colors going in there. like life colors everywhere all right so we did that now we're gonna come over here do this one see here we got one that's probably that might not fit um, yep that one doesn't fit so we're gonna put him back we're gonna take him out. it's kind of counterproductive because I'm gonna come across it again but um, don't really have the space to put all the ones that don't quite hit the mark right now. So now we're just wrapping up. We got three more and then we're going to start over basically from the beginning. And it could be like, like I said, it could be any, you could do this any way you wanted to. Um, this is just the way that I'm doing it. No right or wrong way, just your way. And see, this one's got actually an imperfection in it, but I think we might be able to get it out. Um, whenever doing this kind of stuff, be careful so you don't stab yourself. And I'm, I'm going to hope that I don't. There we go. I have to do that with the wood beads every once in a while, too. All right, so and that concludes the first pass. So now we're going to, like I said, start over. I've been pretty lucky with these in the brown leather cord. Um, I haven't had too many that come I come across where they don't fit. It does happen, but not that much. And these are just basically your common uh, sorted glass bead kits that you could pick up at any hobby store. Nothing in special order or special about these ones. I just like that there was like a nice variety of colors and it served what I wanted to create. Served the purpose, fit the bill, whatever you want to say. Alright, so now we're going to be heading into our second interior run. We're probably going to end up stopping inside of here, if I had to guess. It's a semi-educated guess. I've put together about 15 of these so far. Oops, we almost messed that up. Probably will do that with the amount of beads that you're doing. Um, you probably will have instances where you use the wrong color bead. I don't think it's, at the end of the day, I don't think it's like game breaking or anything like that.
I've just been trying to use them equally. Got that one, and we're coming over here. See, we're getting close to the end here now. Alright, so now we're going orange. We got this fuchsia or pinkish one. So that one was really bad. That one we're going to put off to the side. Alright, so we're going to see if we can get a narrow bead to finish this off. There we go. So guy worked perfect. All right, so now we got like a little bit of end left to it. So we're gonna set that down just like that. And we're going to get this crimped up. Oops, if we can hold on to it. These are hard to hold on to, they're really tiny. All right, so we got it started. We're gonna take this back. And again, we're going to be looking for the item to be in there flush. And then we squeeze it down tight. And then we're going to come off to the other side here. And we're going to fold this over. Squeeze it nice and tight when you get it like that. There you go. You can see there's a little bit of space, like, but what I said it with the ones that fold in tighter, um, you can move them around so that it'll give it a bit more flexibility. All right, so we got that done. So the next step is going to be the jump rings. So we're actually going to use two pliers for this, and we're going to kind of fold them forward and back. You don't want to pull it apart. There you go. And the first one we're going to put the lobster clasp on. All right, and then we're going to fold it through like that, and then you wiggle these back and forth until you lock it back in place. It's kind of back and forth, and there it is locked in place. So we got one down, one to go. All And we're going to do the same thing on this ring. Rock it back and forth until it's locked in place. There we go. And we test the clasp, make sure it works. Always test. There we go, it opens up nice. Comes together nice. And there we have our glass bead bracelet. So I hope you like this video. And we're going to be doing another video with wood beads coming up soon. As well as some other projects. If you enjoy this content, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought and uh, maybe other crafts, projects, or hobbies you want to see me look into or just tell me how your day was. Until next time, be inspired, be inspiring, and growl louder. Peace.